Hello, this is J.R. Chadwick. I would like to make an addendum to my video, Nephilim Free Typical Creationist Liar 5, dash Mark Surtees 2. I had cut this part out of my video due to time, and because I felt they were such old and repeatedly debunked ideas that I did not think it was necessary to cover them. However, there was another issue I didn't think about at first, and I felt it was necessary to bring it to light. Right, the salt in the oceans comes mainly from rivers. Rivers will wash over the rocks, the soil, and salt that's it, present in the, in the rocks, in the soil, is dissolved in the, in the river and taken out to sea, and it gradually accumulates. So there's a rate of input of salt into the seas, which can be measured. And the rate of input is actually, worldwide, 450 million tonnes of sodium, in terms of sodium, per year. Salt is sodium chloride. So that's easy to measure, and that's, there's nobody contests the numbers here, actually. The rate of loss is about uh, 120 million tonnes per year, most of the loss being that, that basically as the sea washes up on the shore, you get spray, and the salt is deposited on your car and makes it rust. Uh, that's why your cars rust when, they, when, you, when you live in Edinburgh. So the rate of loss is actually easy, fairly easy to measure, and it's about 120 uh, million tonnes per year. So you can actually work out, from the, knowing the rates of input and the rates of output, as to how long it would take for the sea to be at its present salinity starting from zero, which is your, your most favourable assumption for the evolutionist. So if we make the assumption that to start off with all the sea was fresh water, it would actually only take 40 to 60 million years for the present concentration to be reached. And this is a maximum figure. Okay? This is the maximum age of the sea based on the amount of salt that there is in it. On all, uh, taking into account all the figures that we know. So where's your billions of years? So somehow you've got to explain away the fact that the sea is not an awful lot saltier, saltier than it is. So again suggesting that the sea might possibly be a good deal younger than three million years. Helium in the atmosphere is another piece of evidence which suggests again that the Earth is a lot younger, or well, the Earth's atmosphere, and therefore the Earth is a lot younger, and we're led to believe sometimes. Most of the helium in the Earth's atmosphere comes from radioactive decay. Helium is a small molecule, two protons, two neutrons, and a couple of electrons, variable, doesn't have to have electrons. But helium is quite a small molecule. But it, the main source, as far as we can tell, is from radioactive decay. And we're going to come back to helium and radio, radioactive decay towards the end of this talk. And helium, of course, being a light molecule, is constantly lost from the Earth's atmosphere into space. It's not very difficult for it to leave. So people have looked at the helium balance in the atmosphere, and they've discovered that the rate at which helium enters the atmosphere vastly outweighs the rate that it's lost into space. So an awful lot more helium is going into the atmosphere than is currently being lost. Right, so it's, there's a big imbalance. It's huge. And what it basically means is that the current quantity of helium would accumulate in no more than two million years. Again, the maximum age of the atmosphere based on the helium balance, the inputs and outputs, is two million years. That's all you've got. So you need to explain why the atmosphere appears to be so young if you're an evolutionist and you believe the Earth is actually uh, four and a half billion years old. And the atmosphere would be, what, uh, three, three billion years at least. So another problem for the old Earth uh, scenario where helium... The helium balance suggests that the Earth is an awful lot younger than we're told. Now again, these are maximum ages. There's the upper limits. You can't go beyond the limit. You can be a lot less. So it's consistent with a young Earth of only thousands of years old. Okay, let's break all this down. We have a 40 million year old ocean and a 2 million year old atmosphere. On their own, both of these conclusions are incredibly stupid. And, like his human growth rate figure, are based on gross oversimplification of complex natural processes. But we don't need to even go into all that. Just look at those numbers. He has stated that the oceans are 38 million years older than the atmosphere. But this is impossible because without atmospheric pressure there can be no liquid water. Not to mention, these numbers are quite a bit larger than his 6,000 year mark. When I pointed out this mistake to him in an email, he defended himself by claiming that I missed the point that he was simply pointing out inconsistencies with an age of billions of years, and there is no telling what the starting levels were, but they probably weren't zero. I guess that means God must have started us out with some. This omission is basically a concession that his figures are completely worthless. I don't know why he can't see this.
Oh, and remember this part? And again, these are maximum ages. There's the upper limits. You can't go beyond the limit. You can be a lot less. So it's consistent with a young Earth of only thousands of years old. Let me play that for you again. And again, these are maximum ages. There's the upper limits. You can't go beyond the limit. You can be a lot less. So it's consistent with a young Earth of only thousands of years old. Consistent with a young Earth of only thousands of years old? There is nothing consistent about these numbers. He passively mentions that there is a lower limit, but does not divulge into how it was calculated. He just tacks on that qualifier because he knows that his numbers do not support his 6,000 year figure. I'm guessing his age ranges for the atmosphere and oceans respectively are as displayed here. Pretty wide range of error. He thinks any number he can get that, to him, does not support an age of 4.6 billion years must indicate his preconceived notion of 6,000 years, despite being thousands of factors off. If these numbers were at all accurate, it would mean that both ages are completely wrong. It is just too large of a range to fit either. Dr. False Dichotomy, indeed. I am unable to fathom why any scientist would not see the problem with these ideas. I doubt the emptiness of his calculations completely escapes him. That is why he alluded to a lower range he didn't define. He may not be stupid, just intellectually dishonest. Thank you for watching. Once again, my name is J.R. Chadwick.